Hi, I'm Dr. Sean Horn, clinical psychologist, and today I'm going to talk to you about depersonalization. I received a question from one of my viewers that said, is it treatable? So yes, the good news is it is treatable. So this is not a scripted talk. This is just me sharing from the knowledge that I have. As a clinical psychologist, I treat people in private practice, been in the mental health field for 28 years, and I specialize in disassociative uh, syndromes and symptoms, including dissociative identity disorder. So let's talk about depersonalization. This is a disassociative experience where the person's nervous system is overwhelmed. They're anxious, they're experiencing trauma, and their body kind of says, hey, don't worry, girlfriend, I got you. We're just going to check out for a little while. So you have this sensi sensory experience where you know that this is your body, but it feels like it's somebody else's, like you're in somebody else's body. So it's a surreal experience of this out-of-body kind of uh, sensation. Derealization is where it feels like you're watching a movie. You know that you're there. You know that you're in it, but it really does feel like you're watching a movie. So it's surreal, right? So depersonalization is experienced in a lot of my clients when they feel very stressed, very anxious, or they're having a trauma trigger. And it's very scary for them because it really does feel like they're getting taken over by this experience. They have the sensation that they can't control it, that it's it's this phenomenon that just occurs for no reason, and that is very terrifying. And so then what happens is they end up getting anxious about anxiety. They end up getting scared about being alarmed about depersonalizing. So the very first thing we want to do is demystify this experience. We really want to educate people about their nervous system, that there's not some weird phenomenon that's happening to you that's taking it over. In fact, it's a very well-developed nervous system that is protecting you. It is stepping in when you're way overwhelmed with that emotional experience. And it's helping you to kind of weather it, to get through it. So instead of making it the enemy and getting scared about it, we want to pull it in and thank it. We want to pull it in and say, thank you for helping me to survive. Thank you for helping my nervous system to calm down and to do what it needs to do. And we also want to just have that biofeedback awareness of our nervous system. Learn about how our bodies work. What are the signs that I'm starting to get worked up? When am I more emotionally vulnerable? When does it typically occur for me? Does it occur when I'm sleep deprived or I have, haven't eaten well? If I'm pre-diabetic and I'm having blood sugar issues, when it, what happens in those situations? So a lot of times people have certain vulnerabilities that bring on a more frequent experience of depersonalization. So for if you're not sleeping, you're not eating, you're angry, you're stressed, you're, you're not getting the proper nutrition, you have a medical condition, um, maybe your thyroid is off, maybe you're having some uh, issues with zinc and magnesium, potassium, you know, you just really want to get good blood work done so you can make sure that you're ruling out any sort of physical component that may be contributing to that experience. So you you start to take note of those things. And this is something that I recommend you work with your therapist on where you and your therapist will really break down. Maybe you journal, maybe you keep track of when you have those symptoms, on what days, under what circumstances, what is surrounding it, so you can have a greater understanding. And then, and then once we know what our bodies are doing, then we want to target uh, our interventions. And this is where we learn ways to cool the nervous system rather than its default way of depersonalizing. So we learn relaxation techniques. We learn meditation, mindfulness. Sometimes when people are having a panic attack, they need to do a very vigorous exercise, jumping jacks, uh, 
what they call it, planking, um, maybe you need to put ice on your face. This is called the diving response where you get a couple of ice packs and you put it on the mask area of your face and you hold your breath for 30 seconds or as long as you can. So you get your ice packs and you go, okay, put it on and this will help ground you. So really we need to have those grounding exercises and, and strategies in place so that you can bring that nervous system back down. So you learn techniques like that. And then we also want to have a greater understanding of is this a trauma response and to really look at what kind of trauma work do I need to do. I am a fan of body informed trauma work, somatic treatments, things that work with the body rather than just engaging it intellectually. I do believe that you can't heal trauma with logic and with a calm, rational mind. Uh, the trauma activates the fight and flight system of your body, so you really need some methods that will help the body. You know, they say the issues is in the tissues, but do not be alarmed. Some people, when they hear that, they think, oh gosh, I'm gonna have this forever. It's, it's helping us understand that you are having an unconscious, subconscious response that gets triggered without your awareness in, with the highly developed survival brain. But it's also helping you get some strategies so you can get ahead of it and you can intervene with it. So I want to leave you on this note. And that is that whatever we struggle with, if we approach it like, I got to get rid of this. And if I do treatment, if I do this method, I will process it. I will never experience again. We're setting ourselves up for failure. That's like saying, I want to understand the weather so I can ensure that it will never again rain. It will never again have an earthquake. It will never again have those kind of things, right? It's impossible. We're going to have those responses. I mean, that's part of this world, it's part of life, and so forth. So, instead, what we want to do is look at what kind of things contribute to those weather, those storms, and intervene and mediate it as much as we can to our ability, and then also develop our plan for what we do in the event that that storm comes. So we wanna have our earthquake drill, our tsunami drill, things like that. So you feel empowered. I hear one of my chickens in the background. Oh, there they are, look. Here, you see them? They just always come when I'm talking. <laughs> Little side note, this is my life, Dr. Sean Horm. I'm on my patio here, so it's very impromptu. I just got that question, so I thought, heck, why not make a video about it, right? And I don't know where to look. <laughs> So anyways, um, oh, the girls distracted me. Let's see, what was I saying? So you want to have an approach for that storm so that you can get ahead of it and you can nip it in the bud. And as you begin to have those experiences, you're going to feel less hijacked by it. You're going to feel more empowered. You're going to feel more capable of doing that. And so we develop a tolerance for it that if I'm depersonalizing, I have things I can do to... Um, to intervene. I'm laughing because I have a glass top and my chicken sees a seed and it's jumping up against the glass. I hope it doesn't get hurt. Anyways, oh, I think I need to wrap this up. So um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Please put them down below. I will address this and talk about it more. So for today, I want you to know depersonalization is not some phenomenon that's happening. It is just a very good nervous system that is helping you and protecting you. It is treatable. Uh, to expect that we would never have it, uh, any sort of anxious response is impossible in a setup for a negative thing. Because when you have it, you're just going to start freaking out, right? You're going to go, oh, no, why is it here? Why is this happening? And that's how panic attacks work, is that you get panic about the panic, and, and it just becomes this snowball kind of experience. So instead of saying, I never want to have this again, we are going to say, I'm going to do learn as much as I can. I'm going to have biofeedback. I'm going to have my grounding uh, resources. I have my toolbox so I can get ahead of it. And in the event that I am depersonalizing, I will tolerate it. I will get myself through it. I, won't, I will work at not having alarming thoughts to it. And this is stuff that you and your therapist need to really strategize so that you have a clear 
individualized plan for you. So remember, this is not a replacement for treatment. This is psychoeducation. So you would have a customized individual plan that is best for you. Because part of the therapy is you look at what works, what doesn't, and no one recipe works for everybody. So sometimes people need medications. Sometimes there's a medical thing going on. And that's another important part, point. Make sure you talk to your doctor. If you found this helpful, or talk to the doctor, meaning get your lab work done and make sure you rule out any other medical condition that could be contributing to that. If you have questions, please put them down below. And please subscribe, like, review, comment. Come over, listen to Inspired Living Podcast. Go watch my Shame Sister show, which is my other YouTube channel. And sign up on my newsletter at Dr. Sean Horn so you can get some more tips and tools and webinars that are going to be coming out. And I hope this is helpful. And I am Dr. Sean Horn, clinical psychologist. I am the shame buster. You know me now. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching my chickens too. Okay. Bye-bye.